This is the 2025 ASUS Rogue Flow Z13. I don't really know how to put it any better than they managed to jam one of these into this case and somehow make it so it doesn't overheat. What is the Strix Halo? In modern computers, companies have sort of separated into two different camps for processors. We've got the thing we've been using for decades that just gets faster and more efficient every year. X86 processors paired with discrete GPUs. Mine is a Ryzen 7 7800X3D from AMD. And then that's paired with a separate GPU, the RTX 5050 in this case. And now more recently, driven heavily by Apple, ARM-based processors are your other option. And that includes these Snapdragon X laptops like the Surface Pro and also also this Zenbook I talked about a couple months ago. They had to make a whole separate ARM-based version of Windows to run these. But also Apple Silicon Mac computers are all ARM, and so is the Raspberry Pi, fun fact, but not really in the same league at all. Snapdragon and Apple Silicon computers use these CPU, GPU, NPU, all-in-one system on a chip designs. Sorry, anyway, CPU, GPU, NPU systems on a chips that consume way less power. And until only recently, ARM-based systems were quite a bit weaker, like the Raspberry Pi, designed for super low power background operations like automation. Well, with this Rogue Flow Z13 computer tablet, combo. AMD has made something of a third processor option, and not really, it's x86. This runs on x86. So all regular Windows things work the regular way they regularly work. But this processor, this Strix Halo AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395, it's a mouthful, this processor is doing x86 things very similarly to how ARM processors do their super efficient low power things. This is just dumping a lot more power into its system to get the same result. But interestingly, to me anyway, a lot less power than the big desktop systems use to get the same results. Inside here is a 16 core, 32 thread CPU that can boost up to 5.1 gigahertz. But the Strix Halo is a system on a chip. So the CPU, the NPU, and the GPU are all one thing and they all share system RAM, which is good and also bad. Well, not bad. It's just when you think of a system with 32 gigs of RAM, that's what this thing has, that seems like tons of RAM, plenty of RAM, but that RAM is shared. For instance, on a desktop system with 32 gigs of RAM, if I start up a game, the GPU has its own RAM and this thing doesn't pull from that 32 gigs. With this system, it's completely shared. So if you're running a process, I don't know, like maybe you're working in Blender, which uses GPUs to render stuff. While Blender's open, the GPU in here is gonna be hogging most of the system RAM when compared directly to a desktop system. So you'll have less available to be running other programs simultaneously. However, and I'm on a RAM tangent now, but we're gonna see this through. This also has a huge advantage sometimes, especially if you opt for more than the 32 gigs. This actually comes configurable up to 128 gigabytes of RAM. And there are some programs, Blender included, that will just eat up as much RAM as you can throw at it. And this is especially powerful for those of you who intend to run local LLMs. You can just barely run the 20B version of ChatGPT locally on this computer with 32 gigs. And that's only if you have nothing else running because that sucks up so much RAM, especially if you have the context window set to a, a reasonably large amount. But unlike with, let's just say this RTX 5050, cause it's still sitting on my lap, this thing has eight gigabytes of its own dedicated DDR5 VRAM. So for instance, this'll max out on medium settings on Assassin's Creed Shadows at 1440p. Even if the card and its CUDA cores could handle 4K, it doesn't have the necessary RAM to hold all those textures. The Strix Halo has whatever's left after loading windows into it. So this has something like 24 gigabytes of RAM it can use as VRAM. And no game exists with textures at such a high resolution that this Lappy 5000 can't load them all into memory at once. So let's talk about this GPU. The Z13 has an integrated GPU, the Radeon 8060S. And they've made it so this thing can perform about equally to this RTX 5050. This guy is getting so much screen time today. And this thing is really close to an RTX 4060. And sure, the 5050 is not a mind blowing bonkers speed GPU, but it can play modern games at ultra settings on 1080p, high settings on 1440, which means so can this. I got sucked back into GTA 5 Online Advanced Edition while testing this thing, which actually knocked this video back a whole day. And at its native resolution of 2560 by 1600 on very high settings, this bad boy is running like 120 frames per second. I know that's not a new game or anything, but the enhanced version is kind of new. And the screen has 180 hertz refresh rate. Even with ray tracing on, it was over 100. The gaming performance on this tablet, and I need to talk about that more because this keyboard is just a magnetic attachment. This is a fucking tablet. It will perform similarly and actually just a little bit better than the PlayStation 5. So with one of these computers, you've got a PS5 that fits neatly into a messenger bag. The PS5, not so neatly. 
No, nope, not gonna fit at all. The CPU in here also just happens to benchmark about the same as my desktop CPU, which kind of means you can just shove this desktop GPU into your messenger bag as well. So somehow this is essentially the same gaming performance as this, and it's essentially the same machine as all of this, plus this crammed into a laptop, which is really just a tablet with a super robust magnetic keyboard and with the built-in kickstand. That's crazy town. Until I guess you start looking at the price of it. A PS5 is what, 500 bucks? I think I built that PC for, if we're talking about the RTX 5050 version of it, for about 1400 bucks. I did later spring for the bigger boy. This laptop, the way this one is configured with 32 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD, lists at $2,300. So over four times the price of a PlayStation 5, and a little less than double the price of building a PC that has about the same processing power. But of course, you're not just buying the power. Like I said, you can't take that desktop with you to Starbucks. You can't ride in the backseat of your brother's SUV and play the PlayStation 5 on a road trip to Miami at least not without a medium amount of effort. And this has some very premium qualities to it as well, which puts it more in the realm of looking at Mac laptops. Not in how they work, obviously, but in the premium components like this 180 Hertz refresh screen. These USB-C ports are not just USB 4, but somehow also Thunderbolt, even though it's an AMD processor. And somehow that's not even on the marketing for this computer, not on Asus's website. But my Apple Studio display definitely only accepts a Thunderbolt connection. And this thing sure does work with it. You've got a full size, HDMI, it charges with a 200 watt charger. Part of that is because at full power, the Strix Halo apparently can pull like 120 watts. It's made out of aluminum, not plastic. It has one of those fancy vapor chambers for cooling, which is part of how it can pull that much power without overheating. My desktop CPU's cooling system alone has more physical volume than this entire computer. Although that thing is nearly silent and this system has some audio volume to its fans. It does have a micro SD instead of a regular SD card slot, which I do not understand. Understand. Someone please tell me what you're using a micro SD card for on a Windows computer with a one terabyte SSD. In terms of Mac computers, as I am primarily a Mac user, this computer's raw power lands between the M4 Pro MacBook Pro and the M4 Max MacBook Pro. In Cinebench, M4 Pro scores 1300, Strix Halo scores 1500, and the M4 Max scores 1700. Although while the test was running, and this is actually pretty interesting, the M4 Pro is pulling like 40 watts to do its thing. The M4 Max is sucking down 40 seven watts and the Strix Halo, and this is just the CPUs alone, mind you, coming in a little slower than the M4 Max was burning through 70 watts to do it. These two laptops have about the same size battery, which as a storytelling vehicle is what we call foreshadowing. The battery doesn't last super long on this. That said, this is a $3,500 computer and the Z13 is really close to being just as fast. Even closer on the GPU test, 94,000 to 105, but it's over a thousand dollars cheaper. And on one hand, you've got to deal with Windows, but but on the other hand, you can play Red Dead Redemption 2 while you're sitting on a bench at Epcot. The magnets on this thing and on the keyboard are super strong. And when you want to put it back on, it does a really super good job of lining itself up. You do not ever have to do anything. It's always just gonna slap right into place, which is pretty cool. The typing experience is okay. It's not bad. It's not a MacBook Pro, but I think nothing is, but it's been surprisingly convenient to have this screen that I can pull the keyboard off of and I can just plop it down on the kitchen island where I can eat my breakfast yogurt and granola in front of it. Like a good upper middle-class white middle-aged suburban homeowner. Even my iPad has a keyboard that's just more in the way than this. And if you take it off the keyboard, there's no way to stand it up to watch something. The Z13 has this little built-in kickstand. So how about that now? This will actually make playing Grand Theft Auto better on a plane or a train too, because there's a place for my snacks just sat right in front of it. Normally my keyboard's kind of in the way, if I'm honest. So solid gaming computer, a PS5 with a screen that you can take anywhere. And having that 16 core CPU, this is also a really competent creativity slash productivity machine too. I went ahead and used this computer this whole last week as my daily driver. And like I said, I am primarily a Mac user. So I was a little worried about how tough it would be to do regular workday work on a Windows machine, but really it's the future now. And other than having to remember to use my baby finger on the control button rather than my thumb on the command button to do keyboard shortcuts, essentially all the big softwares I use are indistinguishable once you're in them. A normal workday for me at my salaried job consists of Outlook for emails, Teams for meetings, and I'm the asshole in the office that hooks up my $2,000 camera for meetings, and there was no setup necessary. Totally plug and play for that. Love that. Then I'm mostly on AutoCAD designing or answering questions about how much weight a stick of aluminum truss can hold in a particular production setting and sharing files through OneDrive. And all those things, once I've signed into everything, including Chrome as my web browser, all those things just have my setting 
things and accounts and bookmarks synced from my Mac. And it was actually almost completely seamless. Windows has never been less annoying in my life. I did have to figure out key combinations for taking a screenshot and then where did it put my screenshot? But those annoyances are overshadowed by the fact that you can scribble on your screenshots with this thing because it's got a touch screen that works with the stylus. I quite like that when someone sends me a PDF of a floor plan with questions about whatever thing, I can respond by whipping out this stylus and just scribbling all over the floor plan. In addition to writing an email, it's very helpful. And also, like I said with my iPad, being able to use this computer like a tablet so I can walk around on site at a production thing literally holding a floor plan that I can zoom into and I can add stuff or make notes is clutch with my job. And unlike with the iPad, this has the full version of AutoCAD, so I'm not held back. That's something we in the 1990s might have called tits. Holding my MacBook while walking around the floor just gets a little bit more awkward trying to use the trackpad instead of being able to touch stuff, you know? Then aside from my day job, this job, making videos, I use Gmail for emails, so that was also zero setup and carrying over to this computer. And with all of the creative apps, well, I did have to learn DaVinci for video editing. And woof, learning a completely new software just to make this video about testing out the software was quite a thing. But it runs perfectly smoothly once I switched my camera from H.265 to H.264. And that's not a limitation to this computer, it's just the free version of DaVinci doesn't let you use the better compression. The Strix Halo chip does have media engines, so it can handle multiple streams of 4K, no problem at all. Perfectly smooth, you would have no problem using this computer as your main editing rig. If you want to use DaVinci or Adobe Premiere, I'm a Final Cut Pro guy myself, so I really fumbled through getting a timeline set up so I could test the export. But playback is smooth, scrubbing is super responsive. It seems like it renders out H.264 video at about 110 frames per second. So a 12 minute, 24 FPS video will take about three minutes to render out. Not quite M4 max speeds, but again, a thousand dollars cheaper. I wonder if this is the route everybody's gonna go. I do see the downside in that with my big desktop computer back there, I can just buy a new graphic graphics card and poof, gaming is three times better. Or plunk in another 32 gigs of RAM for a couple hundred bucks. Where with a chip that has everything combined into one thing, you're basically stuck buying a whole new computer to upgrade. The SSD is upgradable in this. That said, it seems like we are almost to the point where the speed of processing is no longer a thing that holds anybody back from doing anything. I upgraded my M1 Max to an M4 Max Mac computer, and with regular workday stuff, you literally can't even tell the difference. And that's five years of upgrades between them. That's wild. I don't know, this laptop is a shockingly powerful gaming computer. Though at $2,000, you're really paying for that engineering. You can get a Victus 4050 laptop for less than a third of the price of it, and this thing handles games about equally to this thing, except at 10 80p instead of 1440p. It's impressive engineering. This thing is really impressive. I'm probably not gonna switch from my Mac though, but I occasionally might end up bringing both with me on trips so that I can build my Roman Empire in my hotel room. Now that Anno 117 is out. Goodbye. Hmm. Snapdragon and Apple computers use these. <laughs>